Yo, welcome back everybody to another video. So today we're going to be talking about how to install and set up a back for app application and connect it and create a node API and push some data into the database. And then um, after this, we'll learn about how to pull the data. So let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so the first thing we need to do is we need to sign up for back for app. I put in a basic email address and uh, a regular password. And then uh, I'm going to click on sign up with email. I've already signed up, but uh, when you do log in the first time, it's going to ask you for this quick survey. Just go ahead and click skip. And then we're going to create a first app application. So it needs a name. So I'm going to call it NBA API. And in brackets, I'll say myself. So it's just for myself. Prove that you're not a robot. And then it'll go ahead and set everything up for you. Perfect, so once you've registered, uh, it's gonna show you this quick tutorial. You can just go ahead and click cancel since we're gonna be setting up it our, in our own project ourselves. And uh, the first thing you're gonna see is your database right here. So you see that you have a, let me zoom in a little bit. So you have two different classes. You have a role and a user. There's nothing inside of them because we don't have any users or any roles to add. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this create a class button and then it's gonna open up this little modal. It's gonna ask you what kind of class name should it be so for the class name it should be pretty simple uh we're just going to be putting these basic nba players and then giving metadata for each row for it so i'll call it nba players and what type of class do you need custom is more than fine it doesn't need the installation or product um, add protective mode this just makes sure that uh, client read write access will only be granted when specified users have security rules um, in our case, we're not going to really worry about that since this is just a side project or a pretty regular project. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and click public read and write enabled. Ideally, if this is a bigger product, project, you would use protected. But for our case, we're just going to use public read and write. After that, go ahead and click on create class and add columns. So there's a couple of data points that we want to be able to push into our database from our API. And uh, for the basketball, for the NBA API, the first column that we're going to be calling is going to be called player name. And this is going to include both first name and last name. And the default value, we can just leave it as nothing um, because we're going to be pushing values into it so we don't have to worry about anything. Is this a required field? This field must be required every single time. And then after that, we're going to add another column by clicking on the add column and continue button. And we're going to do player uh, team. This is also a required field. And then finally, we're going to do player PPG, which stands for points per game. And this is actually going to be a different type of uh, data point. We're going to store it as a number. And this is also going to be a required field. And we're just going to go ahead and click on add column. And that's it. So now we have a couple of columns here. We have object ID. I'll explain to you what all of these mean. But we have object ID, updated, updated at, created at, ACL. And we have our three columns that we just created right here. So let's say we were to add a row. We need to add some information inside of here. So let's say our player name, we'll just put in some random information and then points per game, there we go. And then we click add. So the first thing right here is the object ID. This is a unique value for each row that you have inside of your class. So if you wanted to select a specific object ID, you can do it by actually just calling this column name and then giving it the object ID and parse allows you to do that. After that, you have updated at. This is just the value that you have whenever some sort of field value is changed within this row, this will also change. The created at is just the created at date for when this row was created. And uh, let me see if the time changed. So it's 719. If I were to change a value right here, we should hopefully see something change here. There we go. So we see that this is now changed. This is a different value than this one because it's been updated more recently. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our code editor and then we're going to in create a node API and push some data into this uh, database right here. Alrighty, so I've opened up a new uh, project folder and inside of here the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new file. So I'm going to do touch uh, node.js and this is where all of our node API is going to be stored. And after that we're going to do npm init and initialize npm for our package for our project. And just go ahead and press enter for everything. And then now we have package.json. And after this, we need to do npm install parse. 
So to actually communicate with the database for back for app, we need to initialize the actual uh, project. So go ahead and open up your node.js file. And inside of here, the first thing we need to do is we need to do const parse is equal to require. And we're just going to do parse slash node. So this is going to uh, import all the stuff that's required to work parse with node. And after that, we need to do const app underscore ID. And then we're going to do const javascript underscore key. And these two values we're actually going to get from the actual back for app dashboard. So to actually find these values, you have to click on this little arrow. It'll open up the side nav bar and then go ahead and click on app settings and then security and keys. And this is where you'll find all your security keys. So this is our application ID. This is the one we need for right here. And this is the JavaScript ID, which is what we need for right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the first one and place it inside of quotes inside of there. And then the second one, go ahead and put it in quotes and put it right inside of there. And now don't even try to copy this because I'm going to delete this app no matter what. So anyways, after that, we need to then uh, initialize. Well, we've already we've put in the keys, but now we actually have to initialize it with our uh, actual application. So to make that work, what we're going to do is console.log uh initializing application and then we'll just do app id and then after that we'll do parse dot initialize app id and we're going to give it javascript key like so and then we have to give it the server url so we'll do parse dot server url is equal to https colon slash slash parse api dot back for app dot com slash and that's all you need so we are going to be learning some basic parse terminology today it's not going to be anything too advanced we're just going to be pushing something to the database and that's really about it so the way that parse works is that we need to first tell our project where we're we trying to push the data into so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a variable called const uh, nba players class name is equal to parse dot object dot extend and here we give it the uh, class name which I'm gonna double check is NBA players and so inside of this NBA players class name variable we're storing all of the ability to be able to edit whatever's inside of the database push whatever's inside of the database update and whatever else you want all right cool so now what we need to do is we need to create an object that we're actually gonna push into the database so I already created this beforehand, but uh, this is just an array of objects. It's a uh, it's an array of objects that contains a player's name, their team, and their points per game. And I'm just doing LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Shaq, and uh, Michael uh, Jormid. I mean Jordan. But uh, anyways, after that, we're going to be creating a uh, a function which is basically going to be responsible for pushing data inside of the actual database. And so the name of this function, I'll do const push oops, push player data is equal to async and instead of here we're going to do uh, let batch save data is equal to an empty array and after that we need to actually loop through this entire uh, array of objects so we can get each individual item so I'm going to do four uh, int oops, let uh, i is equal to zero i is less than ppg dot length and i plus plus there we go alrighty so now what we need to do is we need to create a new variable called const obg to push is equal to new uh, new nba player's class name like so I think I should do capital letters let me do capital letters there we go new NBA players class name to push perfect so now we've initialized everything that we need now we need to set the data that we're going to push so since we're already looping through this entire array of objects what we have to do is we're going to do obg to push dot set and we need to give it the column name that we're going to set the data into and so the first one is going to be player name. So I'll do player name in quotes 
and then we're going to do I think it's ppg at index i dot player name like so we'll copy this and just paste it two times and then we'll change these two values right here to be player team and then the last one to be player ppg so uh, let me just make sure this is player ppg player ppg perfect so this isn't going to work right now we're just setting the data into this variable right here now we need to actually push that uh, that's set into this batch save data. So what we're gonna do is batch save data dot push and we're gonna do object to push. There we go. So what is actually within this uh, batch save data? Well, it's actually a uh, subclass which contains the class name we're gonna push the data into and the object count. So usually how this would work is if you had just an individual item, so let's say you want to just push this LeBron James object right here, all we would have to do is something like parse.object.save, and then it would save each, it would just save that one individual item into the database. However, since we're saving a whole bunch of items, we need to use a different parameter called save all. And that parameter will allow us to be able to save each and every individual object as a independent row. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and actually push this bad boy into the database. So the way this is going to work is we're going to do, uh, we're going to set this to a variable. Uh, so I'll do const push to db is equal to await parse dot object, oops, parse dot capital O object dot save all. And we're going to do ppg not PPG, it should be batch. There we go, hit batch, save data. And then we're just going to go ahead and do um, return push to DB. And finally, run the function. So we'll do push layer data. Oops. And let's go ahead and run node. Hopefully it works. There we go. So now we've successfully connected to our back for app API and pushed the data into the database and we've created a node API to do all that. And now let's go ahead and actually try to receive it, um, but we're gonna only use Postman for right now. In the next tutorial, we're actually gonna connect it with uh, React and make a whole little uh, application with it. Alrighty, so I've opened up Postman and we need to receive the data. So we're gonna make a simple get request. To this URL, parsed API back for app slash classes slash NBA players and we need to give it some headers. So the first header we need to give it is something called x parse dash application dash ID, and then x dash parse dash rest dash API dash key. And this is exactly where the same area where we got the original security keys is. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the application ID and put it inside of here. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy the rest API key and place it inside of here. And now, if we were to send this request, we should see, hopefully, let me make this a little bigger. There we go. So now we see that we've successfully created and connected all of our data. We've pushed it into the uh, Backdrive database, and then we uh, received it into Postman. And it's going to be very easy to also display the data. So don't worry about that. I'll show you how to do that in the next video. If you did like this, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.